Today I'm tying an elk hair caddis. Stay tuned. So good morning. I'm at the bench today and we're just about a week away from a little bit less from opening day of trout season. Going through my box there's a couple flies that I want to add to my box um, even though I already have a game plan of what I want to try and use. Uh, with all the walleye flies that we've been tying lately that I'm truly looking forward to using uh, opening day of walleye in May. Um, so I'm kind of on a streamer kick. So I've tied up a bunch of uh, hair wing streamers, a couple with um, some uh, natural uh, black bear and polar bear. Um, I picked the polar bear up at a fly shop in Ontario. Um, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. I use it very sparsely, just occasionally, mostly on traditional, for traditional uh, patterns. And um, so I'm looking forward to using a streamer that I did with Polar Bear. Um, if that works really well, maybe we'll tie up uh, one here. But today I am uh, filling my box with one of the most used dry flies. So today we're going to tie an elk hair caddis, uh, which was uh, originally designed by Al Troth, his version. We'll change things up a little bit, um, but I'll kind of discuss that, the different materials um, as I use them. But it's, you know, the caddis, you know, you go... <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure what I do at a river is probably like most fly fishermen. You get to the river, you're walking down along the bank and you're hitting the bushes and you're seeing what bugs fly off. You're looking at the water and seeing what bugs are on there. Um, you're looking in the air just to see what bugs are flying around because we want to match the hatch, of course, right? And then I open my fly box and I tie on a caddis. Uh, caddis, here where I fish, is uh, pretty standard. Um, early season, late season, middle of summer, hot summer days, rainy days. Um, the elk hair caddis is um, always a good fly to have on your rod. So let's switch over. So uh, the way uh, Al, the recipe that Al uh, Troth used with his elk hair caddis uh, is a tan thread. And I am going to do a size 12. Uh, any dry fly hook is uh, going to be okay for this uh, fly. Um, in front of me, I just have some cheap hooks, you know, because they're for my own personal use. I'm not reselling these. Um, this is just a Fly Shop TFS 100, which is pretty typical, comparable to the uh, Mustad. I think it's the 9460 off the top of my head. I have, I'd, I'd have to look at my book, but I'm pretty sure that's what the uh, dry fly hook is. Or also, I like the uh, Dairiki, um size 12. This is a bronze hook, which is pretty typical, you know, if you compare them side by side. And I need one more tool, my little hook here. And let's, let's turn on some lights. I am very disorganized this morning. All right. 
going to make sure I have a tag end. I'm going to lock this into place and walk my thread towards the point of the hook and leave this tag on, tag end on. I'm just going to set that aside for now. Before we add any of our hackle, I am going to use this hairline dubbing, insect green. Bright, bright, bright green. Um, I was very fortunate. Uh, one day I was just adding a um, tippet to my leader. It was a little windy, so I was sitting in the truck. Um, and I was fortunate where a caddis had landed right on the window, and I could see perfectly the egg sac that it had. And I was surprised at how bright green um, this was. So that's what um, we're going to tie a egg laying caddis just by adding this bright neon green. I pulled my thread forward just briefly. I want to add this egg sac on but then when I wrap this extra thread forward I don't want to flatten my egg sac. So I'm just tying a simple ball. I can put this out of the way. Take away the extra. And just lock the thread on right in front of on the hook eye side of this ball. This is a Danville. It's a very fine wire silver. You can also use, this is a very cheap and expensive. I have this copper or gold wire, which came out of a small motor or transistor radio or something. This wire is as thin as thread. Love using this. Uh, it doesn't add any weight to the fly. And this, And also very similar, this Danville wire is super thin. It's got a little bit, it's probably a half the diameter wider than that golder wire. But I like using silver on my caddis. Not sure why, I don't know if it makes a difference. Next for our dry fly hackle, uh, a ginger is uh, what I think is um, perfect for this fly. This pack is a medium ginger, it's uh, Whiting's from Whiting's, very nice. A little bit small though, since we are doing a uh, size 12, but those are 14 and smaller. Um, I do believe I have some of that darker ginger, I just um, couldn't find my pack. And the first one I did find though was this, they call a light ginger. Very pretty saddle, also from Whiting. And this one, as you can see in the pack, has some stems that have done on them, as well as that dark, almost black uh, stem and barbs on some of the feathers. So I took this feather and as you can see, The coloring on that it has that black stem and then some of the barbs are almost white that dun color they have black tips you have that ginger in there as well so this is a very pretty feather 
cut away the barbs just so I have something to tie in on. I can lock this into place. I can set that out of the way. For our body, just that medium olive. And I go fairly sparse. I can always add dubbing material. A little bit harder to take it away. Just twist on a dubbing noodle. Add more as needed. Up just about an eye's length back. Now I can take my hackle and with the open wraps two, three. These were all between my vise and my bobbin. This last turn around, I bring it to the outside of my bobbin. So when I switch hands, I can lock everything into place. The length of these barbs you want to be minimum. The uh, length of the hook gap. And um, actually, you, you know, the, the perfect size would be one and a half times your hook gap. taking away some of that bright dubbing. Now I take the thread and the wire together and then I can walk this back and forth between my hackles. Gives it a little bit of durability. I like to add this with the thread uh, alongside the wire. Um, I think it helps me. I think I can feel it better, uh, to be honest. You could omit the wire and just add the thread in the, at this step just to give a little bit of durability and just like with the hackle my last wrap is on the outside of my bobbin so when I switch hands I can pick up my bobbin and lock that into place and with my older scissors I can carefully nip that wire away And along with the thread. Now for this, and I think I have to go to my other table, bear with me. So at this stage, what I did is I just uh, went and grabbed a pair of tweezers just to get these uh, hackle fibers that were trapped with the thread. You could snip them away with scissors um, as I get older. I just find this to be a little bit easier. I can just grab the hairs and pluck them away. Um, That way I can hold the thread out of the way and I'm not snipping it. Very easy just to get the I do try to hold the hook. I don't want to bend it. Very nice. Now on a bigger caddis 
the hackle's more prominent and make some a mohawk up the back here. Um, you can take your scissors and just trim those away. Or you can leave them. I like to just snip them away. And then for the wing, uh, larger hooks, just a straight deer body hair, I think um, looks great and, and is more traditional. You know, before guys could just go down to the local, local fly shop, right, and, and get all sorts of body hair choices, right? Elk body hair, of course, uh, as the recipe states. I like to go with the uh, medium coastal deer hair. This is uh, just hairline. This color, I don't know if they put a color on here. Maybe the color is just medium. It It's just a, a brown that has um, some lighter tips and a little bit of a grayish uh, towards the uh, butt ends. Just a nice color. But I like the coastal deer, deer hair. Uh, just because it's a little bit more fine and uniform compared to um, the deer body. So I do use a hair stacker for the wing and I have a couple here. There's probably another two or three on my desk. One, there's, there's one that's much larger, but you can get these in a couple different sizes. Um, I do like the brass stackers just because I like the heft in my hand as I'm doing this. Um, but they make some nice plastic ones as well. But I have this small one that we're going to use. And again, we're tying this on a size 12, so it's fairly small. You don't need much of a pinch. put this in the stacker I do like to pull the short fuzzy pieces off the butt end this this pinch might be slightly thick but just like when we're tying other bucktails we do thin it out slightly put it in my stacker get to tap the table give it a few taps When you open it up, you have your hairs all lined up nicely. And I usually take a look at the pinch. I'll measure it. This pinch should be the length of the body from the hook eye to the hook bend. And then I take a look at it. There's usually one or two hairs that are slightly crooked, sticking out just slightly. I usually pull them out. Switch hands. And just like with tying jigs, keep this pinch tight, tight, tight. And lay it into place. As you can see, we still we haven't trimmed it yet. There's a couple different ways you can do this. One is to wrap the thread around just the hair to help bind it together. I like to lay it in place. One, two very loose wraps. So as I come around, now I can pull straight up on the hook and you want those butts to flare out slightly. But because I'm pulling straight up, the force of the thread is being pulled straight down. So I'm not twisting the hairs around the hook shank. Um, but putting a, a loop around your pinch before laying it into place does the same thing. So now I can give that nice snug wraps. 
and I can whip finish. Boy, I am not set up this morning. I am very disorganized. As you can see, my um, my bobbin is very tight. So when I pulled the thread out, it didn't bend the hook. It actually made it slide in the vise. So I'm going to tie this knot and then correct that. So there's my knot. I adjusted my hook in the vise. And now I can Take the buttons, and I usually fold them down tight first. Make sure I have the whole pinch. Trim them at an angle. Try to have all of them in your hand. They're not my good scissors, that's why I didn't cut, right? Oh, there we have it. Very hard to see, but let's see if we can get some good angles on this. Let me um, use the Perfect hatch, head cement. I do have on my fly table just regular spar varnish. That's what I like putting on these flies. Works perfectly, but with a bodkin. Just a light drop. Making sure that I don't have any head smack in the eye. All right, let's get a proper picture of this. Let's do a trick. Hold on, bear with me. Something with an eye. There we go. The camera focuses on the eye, I believe. So, it's a little bit clearer picture. But there we have our egg laying caddis it's a size 12 hook nice and tiny it's about it's about the size of a dime a little bit smaller we'll do some creative editing on this because a little out of practice kind of stumbled stumbled through that actually tied it three times <laughs> <laughs> to get the finished product. Um, spent the whole winter tying bucktails, uh, jigs, and streamers. That's what has been keeping me very busy, but I am looking forward to uh, opening day of trout season this year and just going through my box, of course, um, 
wanted to just add a couple more caddis flies in there. I'm going to tie up three or four more, um, particularly of the size 12. That's my favorite size to use when fishing a caddis fly. Uh, there are times where I do go a little bit bigger. Um, fishing um, turbulent water, um, Painter's Bend and um, Horton Bridge the bend there um, come to mind where uh, you're fishing in some ripples and um, it's just a little bit easier to see um, I like having a couple different colors some towards the light tan almost white uh, spectrum and some darker darker brown and close to black a caddis is a great fly you could you know tie tie a really long one add a couple legs to it and it's a great hopper imitation um, but it's definitely a go-to and but like I said you know nine times out of ten when I'm walking along the stream and I'm looking at the bugs and trying to match the hatch what do I do I grab a caddis so I think that will do it for us today um, as always hit that like button and subscribe Add some comments down below, um, especially if you have, have any questions. Um, if you want to see different dry flies, um, put those down in the comments. I'll be tying more up uh, throughout the summer. I don't usually videotape when I'm tying dries uh, or, or flies, and typically only because I do that at my other bench. Um, and as you might have noticed, I've even swapped out my um, Universal 2 for my fly tying vise just so I could do it in front of the cameras but i think that will do it for us today till next time guys keep tying in tight lines